Okay, good evening everyone. Uh, for those who are just meeting me as a reminder, and for those that have never met me and don't know who I am, my name is Frank Shocker. I am the chairman of the Tomorrow Tribe. Now, what we've been doing for the past uh, three weeks is we've been conducting these education sessions every Saturday night in order to try to educate our people on the eligibility of our people for registration as a Native American tribe. Let me go ahead and uh, go back a little bit and give you a brief history. You know, back in the uh, back in the back in the seventies, former Governor Ricardo Bedalia started a movement, and that was a movement to protect the rights of the indigenous people of our island. Okay, he started a few things and he wasn't able to complete them because at that time uh, we were very limited in, in our rights and in what was protecting us. The ball got picked up by, by other people down the road like Angel Santos. Okay, But again, Angel was pretty limited in what he could accomplish because of the loss. We live in a society built on laws. And in order to progress or evolve in this society, you have to be able to use those laws to your benefit. Because laws are a double-edged sword. But before you can use the laws, you have to know the laws. Seven years ago, while doing research on Native American rights and how it could possibly pertain to law. We discovered uh, Title 25 of the U.S. Code. Now, hidden inside Title 25 of the U.S. Code, actually down towards the bottom of Title 25, uh, one of the last chapters under the housing section of that law, we found the definitions portion. And under the definitions portion, we found that Guam had been included, as well as the other territories held by the United States of America. It had been included under the definition of state. So seven years ago, we started getting serious about our research on how we could allow our people to enjoy the most amount of benefits how we could allow our people to evolve into a closer, more mutually respectful relationship with the United States. Because we don't believe that independence would be to the best benefit of our people. Simply because of the fact that we wouldn't be able to feed ourselves. If for no other reason. Over 90% of the food that comes to this island is imported. We would not be able to feed ourselves. So either 90% of the people in this island would have to leave, or 90% would starve to death. That's what independence would come about. As well as the fact that since we are not United States citizens, as described under Article 14 of the United States Constitution, as an unincorporated territory of the United States, the United States has the authority, the Congress of the United States has the authority to revoke our citizenship at any given time. Period. I come from a family of United States military veterans, and it hurts to say that. I'm a veteran. My son's a veteran. My nephew's a veteran. My brother's a veteran. My father's a veteran. It goes on and on. But we don't have constitutional rights. Okay. During the course of our research, we decided to start from the beginning. Treaty of 1898, the treaty between the United States of America and Spain, wherein the country of Spain and the Queen Region of Spain seceded certain territories to the United States government as a treaty of peace resulting from the Spanish-American War. In exchange for $20 million, Guam, the Philippines, Puerto Rico, 
the U.S. Virgin Islands were seceded from Spain to the United States of America. Prior to reading the Treaty of 1898, I was always under the assumption that we were guaranteed certain rights under that treaty, because that's what everybody had been telling me, that we were guaranteed the right to self-determination under the Treaty of 1898, and under the pursuant UN resolution that followed. Well, research determined that that's wrong. The Treaty of 1898, and UN Resolution 70, not 64, UN Resolution 70, placed the authority to determine the political status of the native inhabitants of this island fully in the hands of the United States Congress. So that was pretty disappointing, finding out that we didn't even have that right according to what everybody had been telling me. According to those treaties, we did not have that right. Keep researching. Further research turned up the Helsinki Accord. The Helsinki Accord is a treaty signed by the United States and NATO members, European nation members. Now, the Helsinki Accord was actually supposed to be a treaty about nuclear pro proliferation in Europe. But during that time period, in the mid-70s, that was also towards the end of the Vietnam War and all the demonstrations that were going on in the States. And one of the main things that was being demonstrated in the States was that the United States of America was not treating its Native Americans fairly. And that had reached the attention of these European nations. And they used that as a bargaining point with the United States of America to get more of what they wanted. One of the parameters of the Helsinki Accord is the United States of America agreed that Native Americans should be given self-governing authority and that the native inhabitants of all of the territories under the control of the United States government should also be given the opportunity to govern themselves as a race. In other words, the European nations forced the United States of America to recognize that there are different races within the United States of America and that those races should be respected and allowed the opportunity to govern themselves and maintain their identity as a race. The interesting thing about the Helsinki Accord is that there is a policing body that's attached to it to ensure conformance and compliance with that treaty between the United States of America and those European nations. As a matter of fact, that policing body, which is the Office of Special Investigations for NATO, conducted an audit of the Accord in 1995. And the results of that audit are the reason why Title 25, the Indian Act, was amended to include Guam and the other United States territories so that the United States could claim conformance with the Helsinki Accord by allowing those native inhabitants in those territories the opportunity to govern themselves under Title 25, which is the Indian Act. What we're discussing now is a foundation of law. Okay? This is a history and a foundation of the law that enables us to accomplish our goal, which is federal registration as a Native American tribe. And one of the most important things that we can garner from being a registered Native American tribe is true United States citizenship. 